Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to The Shack. Hope everyone is well and staying safe. If you've not seen the channel before and it is your first time here, then a massive welcome to you. My name is Josh and you are watching Iraq The Shack. So today's video is gonna be a little bit different to the normal content that I put out on my channel. It's gonna be part one of a series that I'm gonna be doing. So the series is gonna be called Out In Nature. Now the clue is in the name. We are gonna be heading out into nature. I'm gonna be taking you to some local beauty spots in the surrounding areas of where I live. So we're gonna do various different episodes. We're gonna have an episode on foraging for bioactive enclosures. We're gonna have an episode on moss. We'll probably have an episode on substrate and leaf litters and how we can collect that from the wild. But today's episode is going to be foraging for isopods. So we are gonna head down to Breadhurst. We are gonna collect some isopods. We're gonna bring them back here to the shack. We're gonna set them up in enclosure and hopefully we're gonna successfully cultivate them within the shack. So we've got a special guest with us today. Jaden from Mr. Grimmer's Creatures is gonna be coming down to Breadhurst with us. He's gonna be doing some filming and helping us hopefully, if we can find some, collect some isopods. So I've got my bag packed, I've got my camera, so come on, let's go. Okay girls, let's go. Okay guys, so like I said earlier, this is part one of many in a nature adventure series that I'm gonna be doing on my channel. I'm not entirely sure how many I'm going to do yet but today we are going to be collecting isopods we're going to go down Breadhurst and we're going to collect some isopods um, the next one will probably be the collection and propagation of moss so we'll go down we'll collect some moss and I'll show you how I plant the moss up when I get home and how I maintain it so it's there ready to use as and when we want to build a bioactive enclosure we're also going to do one on just general foraging. So we're going to go out, we're going to collect stones, we're going to collect bark, we're going to collect branches, all that good stuff that we want to use as decor within our bioactive enclosures. I'll probably do this one sooner rather than later because I am in the process of building a bioactive enclosure for my Zanetsis SP blue female who turn up earlier on this week. I'm really looking forward to doing that video because I'm going to be doing a spray foam naturalistic background in a 30 by 30 glass enclosure that I've got for her and then we're going to be setting up the full bioactive so I cannot wait to do that video. Also think when people think of bioactive enclosures people think they're going to cost an arm and a leg but if you go out into nature like I'm going to show you you can get pretty much everything you need to make a real good bioactive enclosure and it doesn't cost you a penny. So if this nature series does sound of interest to you guys and you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell and you'll be notified every time that I upload one of these videos or any other content on my channel. Hey guys, so we're here down in Breadhurst. We're just walking down to the woods now. I'm with Jaden, no other than Mr. Grindler's Creatures. What's up guys? So we're just walking down to the woods now. We're gonna have a look for some isopods. We're gonna collect some moss and some bits and pieces. So I'll see you when we get down there.
Okay guys, so I was looking for some isopods and I broke a piece of this, uh, this dead tree off and we found a spider's egg sac. I'm not sure what the spider is, but the spider's just down in now. So I'm gonna have to very carefully put this back. That's incredible. So let's put this back very really gently. Okay guys, so I found this incredibly old, dried out, fallen piece of tree. Let's see if we can find anything. Aha. There we go. I'm going to try and get this on camera. There we go. Let's get him in the pot. Big fella that one. Now I did see some more smaller ones. And as I peeled it back, they seem to retreat. There we go. So there's another couple of big ones there. Oh yes. So there's quite a few on this piece. There's another one there. See him there? Let's get him. Another little fella. So we've got a couple now. See if we can break this even more. Another little fella there. Okay guys, so I've, I've just pulled this piece of bark up because I'm going to take it home and put it in one of the enclosures. And we found another egg sac. So you can see just there the, the mummy spider and the egg sac. Let's see if we can zoom in. Jeez, no. no, it's cool. I'm not sure what spider it is. There you go. Yeah. incredible 
So yes, second spider find and second egg set of the day. I love seeing all this webbing. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Let's zoom in a little bit more. Quality's going to probably get a bit bad now. Yeah. Mad, uh, mad what you can find. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this piece of bark, but I'm gonna cover the spider back up with something to give it a bit of protection, and then we're gonna move on. This is Mummy Spider in egg sac number three. Not sure what species it is again, but it looks similar to the ones that we've already found. She's absolutely gorgeous. Okay guys, so the first thing we need to set up our ice pod colony is a container. Now you can use any containers that you may have laying around your house, for example old Chinese pots or jam jars or sauce jars, but I'm going to be using a container that I bought from b and I added some ventilation holes either end of the container. So we start off by adding substrate. Now I'm using an organic topsoil, but you can use cocoa fibre jungle bedding or other substrate mixes that you might already have. If you do use potting soil or topsoil, please make sure that it is organic and it doesn't contain any fertilizers or additives. This could be detrimental to the life of your colony. We add the substrate in, we break up any lumps and even it out. Once the substrate's in, we start adding in some pieces of moss. This moss will help maintain humidity and it will also give the isopod somewhere to hide. Once we've added some moss in, we're going to add in some rotting tree debris. Now this is what I collected when we were down in the woods. As you can see, it's very, very soft, very moist and rotten. And the isopods will absolutely love this, and this will give them a good food source. We break it up and spread it in evenly. So this is what we've got so far. I 
I'm now going to add in some food pellets. I bought these online for a few pounds and they're suitable for springtails, isopods and many other small invertebrates. I sprinkle them in, push them into the soil and give them a light misting. This will give the isopods another food source. Once this is done, I place a few pieces of bark loosely on top. This will give the isopods some shelter and somewhere to hide. Now it's time to transfer them from their temporary enclosure over to their new home. The last few were proving a little tricky to catch, so I decided to just tip them in. To finish off, I'm going to add some leaf litter. Again, this will provide cover and also another food source for our isopods. Once the leaf litter is added, we're pretty much done. I'll check on them every three to five days and I'll top up the humidity with a light misting. So this leaf litter will need topping up from time to time. You will know when to do this, as you will see that they have consumed it. Welcome back guys, that's all we have time for today. I really hope you enjoyed part one of the Out in Nature series. If you do want to see part two and you're not already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified as soon as part two is uploaded and any other videos I upload to my channel. A massive thank you to you Jaden, for coming out and helping with today's video. So cheers for that dude, you're awesome. Hope everyone enjoys their weekend and I will see you in the next video. See you later guys.